about fantastic beast theories yes i did a video not long ago on harry potter theories well there was a lot of you that were quite interested in the theories that i picked out to talk about so i thought we'd do one on fantastic beasts and these theories there's seven of them i do believe they made my brain twitch like i said before i started the harry potter theories one this doesn't necessarily mean i believe them it just they made me think they made me think for a second and yeah i'd love to know your thoughts on these theories you know look deeper into them and let me know what you think but yeah i do find these ones quite interesting so if you want to see sorry here me talk about these fantastic beats theories then keep on watching and if this is the first time you're seeing my face hello and welcome to my channel if you would like to become a part of it with us please click that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you're notified every time i upload a video and my social medias are all linked in the description of this video Go check me out and see what I'm up to on those. If you can hear a bit of background noise, I am really, really sorry. I've got a fan on. We all know how hot it is up here in my bedroom now because I go on about it in every video. So let's hope I don't moan in this video. Okay, theory number one. Does Newt Scamander give Dumbledore Forks the Phoenix? So in the books and the films, there is no mention about Dumbledore and Newt Scamander and their relationship at all. But there, on the Marauder's map, if you've got a good eye, in the Prisoner of Azkaban, is Newt's commander. Not just anybody visits Hogwarts, do you know what I mean? You don't just go and visit Hogwarts, there must have been a reason behind Newt's visit. Now in the Crimes of Grindelwald, we do see that Dumbledore and Newt's commander do actually have a relationship. I mean, phoenixes are rare, and Newt does have a case, a fancy case, full of magical creatures and rare ones at that so it kind of fits doesn't it i mean i'm not saying newt visited on that occasion that we saw him on the marauders map to give him forks because obviously we see forks in the chamber of secrets but there is a connection between them two so did he give him forks is there a connection there okay so theory number two ariana dumbledore is an obscure now when ariana was just six years old she was in her garden practicing magic when three muggle boys were spying on her and they saw her obviously practicing magic it either scared them creeped them out and they went and attacked ariana now the attack left ariana dumbledore completely mentally unstable and yeah it really affected her and it resulted in all her powers and magic to turn inwards after this happened to ariana every time she got upset or angry she would magic would explode from inside of her well, this was what happened to credence wasn't it and obviously unfortunately she was the reason for her mother's death when she obviously got angry or upset one time magic exploded from inside her and she killed their mother now it was said that ariana died because she got in the middle of a three-way duel between Abathorth, Dumbledore, um, Albus Dumbledore, and it's because I call Albus Dumbledore just Dumbledore, so I thought I'd said both the names at once. So Aberforth, Albus, and Grindelwald, she got in the middle of their three-way duel and died. Or did she? At the end of the first Fantastic Beast, we see that Credence, well, what seems to us, he died. He died at the end of Fantastic Beast. He exploded and died. But then in Crimes of Grindelwald, Lo and behold, Credence is back. We see him from the beginning. So he didn't die. So did it seem that Ariana did and she didn't die? Obviously only if she is an Obscurel, of course. Did Dumbledore actually send Newt to New York to learn about Obscurals? I mean, he did even have an Obscurel in that fancy case of his, didn't he? I don't know. What do you think, guys? What do you think about that theory? The next one, why was Newt seen on the Marauder's map? There are four reasons that I have found why he could have been on that map but because we're on theory three i'm going to call these a b c and d so i don't confuse myself so we're on theory three susie okay so theory a as to why newt's on the marauders map hagrid that year in the prisoner of azkaban bagged the job of professor of care of magical creatures was newt there to help advise him because obviously yes hagrid loved his magical creatures but obviously at the same time he didn't really know what he was doing. Newt is the master of magical creatures. So is that why he was there? Also, let's not forget that it is that year that they get... Was it that year that they got um, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them? Was it? Oh, I can't remember. Let me know in the comments. Theory B. Did he literally just go 
visit Dumbledore, you know, for a catch-up and a sherbet lemon. I mean, after all, on the Marauder's map he was seen near Dumbledore's office, or was it just inside, but he was that area. So could he have just been visiting Dumbledore? Theory C. Now, Prisoner of Azkaban, that was the year that the castle was surrounded by Dementors to keep Sirius Black out. Now, not a lot of people knew about Dementors and how to handle them. Newt would have, because he knows about creatures. So was he visiting to help the students understand Dementors and know what to do and what not to do around them? Theory D. Was he there? It was the next day that Bookbeak was sentenced to be executed. So was he there as a backup if Harry and Hermione didn't, you know, do what they needed to do? Was he there to just stick Buckbeak in his case? Well, if he was there to do that, why wait for Harry and Hermione to see if they fell? Why didn't he just do that in the first place, if that's the reason? Hmm. But yeah, they're the theories that I read up on about Newt being on the Marauder's map. Is any of them for something you believe could be true? Or do you have another theory for it? Let me know in the comments. Theory four, is Queenie pregnant? I'm really not sure how much I believe this one. Like I said, I don't necessarily believe any of them. They just make my brain twitch. But it did make me think, just listen to this and then let me know what you think. Now, they've been known to give us little Easter eggs, but throughout the posters of For Crimes of Grindelwald, uh, Queenie has her hand on her belly through the photos. I think all of the posters. Now, as we know, this is a natural posture for a pregnant lady. I mean, when I get my photo taken, I don't put my hand on my belly. But when I was pregnant with my boys, if somebody took my photo, I did naturally, well, I did anyway without having my photo taken, but I did naturally put my hand on my belly. Whether this was a case of, look, I'm pregnant, I don't know, but it was natural to put my hand on my belly for a photo. Anyone else? Any other women that have had babies or are pregnant now? Let me know what you think in the comments. But I think it's quite, you know, why would she put her hand on her belly? I don't put my hand on my belly for photos. Is that a little, little sort of sneak into maybe that she's pregnant? Not only that, obviously Queenie and Jacob have a really nasty argument. By the way, this fan is helping me so much. Again, I'm sorry if you can hear background noise, but trust me, it's helping me film so it's it's staying on, it's staying on. But yeah, as we saw in the Crimes of Grindelwald, Queenie and Jacob do have quite a nasty argument resulting in them not splitting up as in their relationship, I wouldn't have thought, but they went their separate ways. They needed to cool down. Now in the argument, Queenie says to Jacob, and I might word this completely wrong, but what she was trying to say was, what was it? Why is it wrong to want to marry you, to want a family with you, to want what everyone else has? I'm sure that's what exactly, that might be exactly the word she says actually, I think I did well. Jacob also says in the argument, well I'm just curious, hang on, well I'm just curious, when was you going to wake me up? After five kids? Now when we think about this argument, doesn't it make you think, I mean obviously they would have spoke about it before, but... They must have argued about it before, and when he said, what, when we've had five kids, not a child? Am I thinking too deeply into this argument? But could Queenie have enchanted Jacob and got pregnant just through that, really? Was, was it her intention to get pregnant, or just to marry him and then let him out of the enchantment? Either way, Queenie, what you did was wrong. I mean, don't get me wrong, you will do anything, anything for the one you love, for the one you want to marry. And obviously, it was forbidden. They couldn't get married. But she went to join Grindelwald. She knows there's a bad to him. And if it were me, I'd have just wanted to run away, change my name and get married that way. Change our names, have a different last name together, things like that. But she went and joined Grindelwald. Was she trying to protect someone else? Was she actually pregnant? I don't know, guys. Let me know in the comments what did you think to that theory. Theory number five. Is it five? I do this all the time. It is five. It is five. Hang on. It's five. We're all right. We're all right. So theory number five. Credence is not Albus Dumbledore's brother. Arielus? Is that what he was? That's what Grindelwald called him? Your Arielus Dumbledore. I can't remember. Something like that. So on Credence's birth certificate, it says that he was born in 1904. Remember that date. Percival Dumbledore, which is Aberforth, Albus and Ariana's dad, he went to Azkaban in 1891 and was said to have died in Azkaban in 
1900, just had to make sure I got that date right. Kendra Dumbledore, obviously the mother of the three, died in 1899, obviously by Ariana's explosive self. So remembering Credence was born in 1904, he was born after their deaths. The only thing that could have happened, maybe, I think is a bit far-fetched though, but the only thing that could have happened that I read was that Percival actually escaped Azkaban in 1900, faked his death, and got another woman pregnant. Being the woman that we saw in Lita's memory when she's swimming down to save who she, well, obviously Corvus Lestrange, she thought it was her own baby, but that would have made Credence Albus Aberforth and Ariana's half-brother. But the only thing that gets me with that bit, how can you fake your death in Azkaban? You can't, you couldn't possibly fake your death. You've got no magic in there. The Dementors are on you all the time. <laughs> you couldn't just lay there and just not breathe. Do you know what I mean? How would you fake your death and they think that you are actually dead in Azkaban? So I am swaying that Credence isn't the brother. Who is Credence? Theory number six, guys. Jacob Kowalski's memories. As we know, at the end of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, the Thunderbird swoops up into the sky doing its little rain dance with the sweeping evil Venom and it gets rid of bad memories. Now Jacob ends up in that reign of Venom with all the other muggles, but Jacob is a different muggle to the rest of their muggles under that Venom, right? What I'm trying to get at is the other muggles they were forgetting the events of that day, which were obviously purely horrifying. Whereas Jacob, he knew everything leading up to that event and he had amazing memories, not just bad memories. I mean, when obviously we saw at the end, he had his bakery, I was so proud. I was like, guys, oh, got his bakery. And then obviously he was making fantastic beasts into cakes and pastries and things. And he obviously remembered something, but wasn't quite sure what it is. He thought they were dreams. He just came up with these ideas but then as soon as Queenie walks into the bakery it jogs his memory just like that because he has very very good memories about Queenie and the other guys. So this would be why Serafina wanted Jacob completely obliviated not just in the Venom Rain. Venom Rain? That's what we're going to call it. The Venom Rain. I have saved the best for last because it did make me think is Tina Goldstein the master of the Elder Wand. So at the end of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, Tina Goldstein disarms Grindelwald. Well, you know, it was Graves, but it was Grindelwald. She disarms Grindelwald. But yes, it wasn't the Elder Wand she disarms off him, it was actually Graves' wand. But we learn in Deathly Hallows that when one wizard disarms another wizard, they become owners uh, and the owner of all of the other wizards once. Let me explain. So when Draco disarmed Dumbledore, he was actually the master of the Elder Wand because he disarmed him. But Harry disarmed Draco. Yes, he disarmed Draco and took Draco's wand, not the Elder Wand, but because Draco was master of also the Elder Wand, that then made Harry the master of the Elder Wand. That's why at the end we find out Harry was the master. But apparently when Tina took Grindelwald's wand, or Graves' wand, whatever you want to say, it is Grindelwald though, when she takes his wand, she uses the spell Accio, which is a summoning spell, not a disarming spell. But she still wins the wand off him, in a sense. So is she the master of the Elder Wand? What's your thoughts? Okay, Potter Puppets, that was my seven theories from Fantastic Beasts that I really... I'm not going to lie, I didn't actually find that many theories about Fantastic Beasts, probably because there's only two films so far. It was quite a tough one to research, um, but I have been... The, the stuff that goes up for these films, uh, this filming, honestly, you've got no idea the hard work I put in some of these. But I wouldn't have it any other way. I absolutely love creating content for myself and for you lovely lot. What did you think to the theories? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you've heard of any that make your brains twitch that you think would make my brain twitch, then let me know them in the comments too, because I didn't find a huge amount. I only find a couple more to the seven that I've sp uh, spoke about today. Um, 
but yeah the, some of the others that I found I didn't it was a bit too much for me what was one of them Queenie being Snape's grandmother um I even watched a couple of people on YouTube speak about that one but I just I didn't feel that one it didn't make my brain twitch so that's the end of the video guys please give it a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I will speak to you all in my next video bye Potter Puppets